Just speaking in terms of charging, uh, our comfort level as they roll these out with having a non-Tesla starts to get a little bit better and we're we won't sweat as much on road trips. Hi, thanks for watching this bonus edition of Talking Cars. I'm John Linkove. I'm Alex Nizek. And as you can see and hear, we are not in the studio. We are not even in our state of Connecticut. We came out here to Brewster, New York, and we're here at a Tesla supercharger station because, Alex, why did we come out here? Yeah, Tesla has opened up a handful, just a handful of their Tesla superchargers um, to non-Tesla EVs. Now here's the next step, the next generation, if you will. All these with the- uh, the, 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 the magic dock is what they're calling. Magic dock yeah. is what they're calling, the little black uh, blister that you'll see on these, <laughs> uh, on the chargers. Right. So what that means is that for every EV out there, almost. Almost. Except for the Nissan Leaf. Right. You can charge at a Tesla supercharger if it has the magic dock. Right, which right now it's, I think as of today, two stations in California, and then there's a handful in um, kind of Southern New York where we are now, and then upstate New York as well. So what you have to do if you're driving, you know, a car like one of these, a non-Tesla or, or not a Nissan Leaf, <laughs> yes. is you, you download the Tesla app, right? And you put in some payment and you basically search for a charger that's in your area, one of these that's compatible. So when you select the charge stall, um, rather than just the Tesla connector coming out that's specific to the Teslas, it's gonna come out with an adapter on it that lets you plug into one of these other cars okay. um, with the CCS on it and honestly that whole process is pretty slick I gotta say like there are some other challenges and some weirdness and quirks that have to be worked out with this whole process right, right. that we'll talk about but as far as that process goes I you know so it's getting nice. it in plugging it setting it up you're all good there usually usually <laughs> right right next we move to the fact that it actually sends electricity to the vehicle <laughs> yeah okay so step one right you've, you've plugged it in that worked very well um, the EQE no issues, right? That started right. charging right away. That did not happen with the EV6. <laughs> yes. So uh, we tried a different charger here, 2C, I think it was, a couple times, and we plugged it in, and it went through all those steps, all the clicking, right. all the lights flashing, and it actually, the car, the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 have this uh, audible announcement like the that voice. the charging has started. It did all that, yeah. right? It started flashing. Um, the app made it look like it started charging. The car said it started charging. But then maybe 10, 15 seconds later, it stopped. Yep. Or it gave an error code, right? Like on the it app. Never, on the app, yep. yep. And then the car stopped. So, you know, if I was at a place where there's some amenities or whatever, I want to go over to Dunkin' Donuts there and get a coffee. I hear the car starts, I walk away. Right. Right. But it never actually started charging. So we did move it over to another spot because it was giving us that error a couple times. Mm -hmm. We moved it over and we did eventually get it to start. Sure. But it was definitely pretty finicky. One of the things that we, we wanted to find today, and we did, was uh, talk to some owners. Oh yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the car yep. and we're going to talk about some experiences because we had some Tesla owners. We also had a guy show up who came all the way from New Jersey yeah. just yeah. to try it out with his Volkswagen ID for it. All right, so while we're charging, um, let's talk about what our experience was with, with people we met. Because yeah, yep. we had an experience where, you know, the EV6 worked, it, did, it didn't work, then it worked. Right. But we met a number of people. One guy, Scotty, yep. um, he came up here from New Jersey. It's about an hour and a half. Uh, so it's, it's a good haul, you know, not right down the street. Uh, but we were so excited to try out the newly retrofitted uh, Tesla superchargers that allow non-Teslas to charge. Because uh, one of the main drawbacks of having a non-Tesla is where are you going to charge? There's Electrify America, there's ChargePoint, um, but there's just not that many of them. And uh, there's quality issues. Meanwhile, there's Tesla superchargers everywhere. They always work. They're nice and fast. And so when they started opening these up to non-Teslas, we got really excited. And we, we literally drove an hour and a half just to try it out. We were so excited about it. He showed up in a Volkswagen ID4. Mm -hmm. But he also owns a Tesla, so he's kind of got this... Uh, Model 3, right? A Model 3, exactly. Yep. So he's kind of got a perspective from both sides. Um, but yeah, so he showed up. He'd never used this before. And he definitely ran into a couple snags. 2A, 2A, unlock adapter. I heard it click. Push in, pull out. There we go. All right. I saw a little blink right there. I saw another blink. I don't know if it's charging. All right, after plugging in, it may take up to two minutes to start charging. So I think right now, the charger and the car are communicating with each other. 
because I see some blinking on my charge port. Oh, that's not good. Red light isn't good. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like it's just not communicating with the car or something. Could always try it again, um, but it looks like it may not work. That's a bummer. Fired it up, clicked on the app that I'm at uh, station 1A, plugged it in, and it started charging. So I am now charging a Volkswagen ID4 at a Tesla supercharger, Th something I never thought I'd see. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Granted, there were some frustrations getting going and parking's gonna be really hairy. And the more popular this gets, the more headaches there are gonna be. And honestly, I foresee some pretty heated arguments in park <laughs> Tesla supercharger parking lots. I'm not pulled, I'm supposed to be like pulled all the way into this spot. Uh, fortunately, I'm not really blocking anybody. I'm on the side of the parking lot, so I'm not in anybody's way. But this is a good example of how these were originally designed for Teslas. And I wish there had been a standard agreed upon with all the automakers of, okay, here's where we're gonna put our charge for. And why don't we touch on that at this point? Because one of the key things, again, the ease of use of Tesla is that it has a short cable because of so much, they have so much power that mm -hmm. they keep the cable short. But all the Teslas have- the, It's also cheaper for them to do that. It's cheaper for them, <laughs> certainly. Uh, but they all have the same tr charge point. Right. Back, driver's side, yep. pops open. It's mm -hmm. you know you once you back up, it's really close, mm -hmm. so it works perfectly. Yeah, all the other EVs are not designed like that. Yeah, they, they could be anywhere on the car, really. And even the cars we have, both of these are on the passenger rear, so you right. have to back up, and then you end up doing an annoying thing, mm -hmm. right? Which is stealing the the charger. Yeah. So ultimately, the since these are all set up one obviously one space per cable, yep. right? Um, if you have to park in, let's say, the right-hand side to use the left-hand charger because right. of the orientation of your charge plug, yeah, you're technically, if this were a really busy station, you're going to be blocking a whole charger, yeah. essentially. One yeah. won't be usable, right? Um, which means, yeah, people might start to get mad. So we talked to all those different Tesla owners, right? And they exactly. kind of had some different opinions on that. Right. So, so Scotty told you that he has the Tesla hat one way. Right and the ID4 hat the mm -hmm. other. And Speaking from the Tesla side, at first, kind of selfish a little bit, like, all right, this is our thing. You know, I'm picturing the stations getting overcrowded. These things are designed for Teslas, you know, they're our thing. But at the end of the day, it makes sense for Tesla to open these up to everybody uh, for a couple different reasons. First, to drive EV adoption. You know, that first number one excuse of, well, where do I charge when I'm out and about? That goes right out the window because there's superchargers everywhere. Also, from a business standpoint, it's a no-brainer for Tesla. I mean, my goodness, you think back to the early days of the automobile, what if you had a monopoly on all the gas stations? What if you own 90% of the gas stations? That's essentially what they're doing. Clearly, there's some growing pains, but he's more charger access is better, sure. right? Just sure. overall, Tesla or not. Um, and actually, some other Tesla drivers seem to be of that mindset, too, with the caveat of as long as they don't have to wait. Yeah, it would've, it would've sucked, it would've sucked. But, um, you know, I know there's like a time limit on it too, you know, so. I mean, if they're, if they're gonna be non-Tesla stations, they're gonna have to definitely add more uh, charging stations to provide uh, other Teslas. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not too bothered from it. They're gonna be a little upset, but, um, you know, Elon got it. <laughs> Yeah, if I don't have to wait, that'll right. be great, all for it. Yeah, exactly. And I do think some of that, you know, you alluded to there is kind of regional, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you go out into California or some of these other areas where there's a lot of Tesla driving around and, you know, busier stations, people are kind of used to waiting, at least right. at certain times of day or certain times of the year even. But yeah, so it is nice to see uh, that at least right now at this location, the owners that we talk to, the Tesla vehicles, right. they're... They're mostly for it with a little right. bit of apprehension of, you know, they don't want to have to wait because, you know, before this was kind of an exclusive thing that they, they had, right. you know, for them only. And now it's not being taken away, but they're having to share. The EV6, the Hyundai Ionic 5, and the Genesis GV60 are operating off a higher voltage. So when you plug into one of these Tesla superchargers, you know, assuming you do get it working, right, um, it is going to charge slower. Uh, this one, you know, right now it's charging at like 43 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. um, so again, better than your level two home charger, but also not outstanding. Right, so not DC fast. Yeah, it's like 
but DC medium. DC medium. <laughs> That's a good, so DC medium rare instead of well done DC. <laughs> so the, the Tesla Model Y that we brought should charge up to 250. That's like the maximum, yeah. right? That, that Teslas can charge at their superchargers. Um, I have seen some people online, the Rivians getting up to like 150, mm -hmm. which that's great. That's, that's pretty fast. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some variability there, but simply increasing the access is, is where it's at. Um, and to be clear, it seems like Tesla is very much aware of this, of the cord length issue that we talked yeah. about and the, the orientation for the different vehicles. Like they're aware of it. They've yeah. acknowledged it. So take it with a grain of salt of when it will arrive and when a solution will be there, they're retrofitting for Definitely. now. Okay, so we've got the speed set and mm -hmm. we've got the etiquette of getting in and what side you may have to you mm -hmm. know, negotiate, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come for free. You Definitely know? not. It's, it's, for Tesla owners, let alone for these new people. Yeah. What is what does it cost and how does it compare to some of these other networks? Yeah, so it's 49 cents per kilowatt hour is the uh, cost. Okay. Um, and it's pretty close to Electrify America's new price is 48 cents per, yeah. <laughs> yeah. per kilowatt hour, right? You can go in there and um, they're offering sort of like a membership type mm -hmm. program for your non-Tesla, right? Or I think it's twelve ninety nine a month yeah. and you'll get... 39 cents per kilowatt hour. So depending on how much charging you're doing. Um, but so again, these are these are trip type uh, um, destinations, for lack of a better word. You know, and, and I mean, in the sense that so many people are probably using mm -hmm. their home chargers. Yes, yeah, if you rent yeah, an apartment, we, we you know we know apartment living, we know rental houses. That's tough. Right may now. not be. It's tough. But yeah. many people aren't necessarily going to make that decision at that point because it you're you're left to the mercy of the network outside. Mm -hmm. So. As a trip, it's one thing. It's just like paying really expensive gas when you go somewhere on a vacation. Yeah. But people should definitely go in there knowing in advance yeah. that it's not right. cheap. Now, they could have set the, and they still can, set the price to whatever they want. So I was happy to see that it's not something ridiculous. Three dollars. Totally out <laughs> right, of the realm right, right. compared to other things. But the point is the access, right? Like we talked yep. about, just being able to, to rely on it and know that it's there. You pay for convenience. Yeah. So Alex, to tie a nice little bow on this, if mm -hmm. I own a Tesla, am I going to be seeing EQEs and EV6s and Rivians inundating me anytime soon? Or what, is it, yeah. what does it really mean for Tesla yeah. owner? Well, if you live in Brewster, New York, and right now this is a, a kind of a hot topic, right? So you'll probably get some people like us come and check it exactly. out for the first time. All the bloggers, all everyone else. Yes. <laughs> so in the immediate future, maybe, um, if you're here. But you know, at large, I think um, they haven't really indicated how quickly this is going to roll out. I believe they're even calling this kind of a beta mm -hmm. program right now, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, we've heard that before. Um, so, yeah, right now it's just a handful of locations, right? So I think eventually we'll see maybe a new charger design. They've kind of hinted at that with longer cables, these types of things. But I think for the vast majority of Tesla owners, um, they won't really be impacted. Mm -hmm. uh, again, depends on where you live, but I think it's going to be a pretty slow rollout, um, mostly retrofits for a while. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. And um, they have committed to, uh, you know, the supercharger network's been growing for since it started, right? Yeah, and they, sure, sure. they've mentioned that they're going to um, open up a couple thousand of these locations, but yeah. it's not exactly clear where right. um, and how quickly. All right, so that's going to do it for this bonus episode of Talking Cars. Let us know what you think about it by leaving comments below or also send us a short video from a Tesla supercharger with whatever EV you have. Talkingcars at iCloud.com. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.